China's most popular cultural export, and now 17 local artists are using our love of Chinese food to explore connections and divides between East and West. Their work is in an exhibition, it's called Dabao, or Takeout, at the Art Gallery of Mississauga. Xiao Jing Yan and Sarah Angelucci are two of the artists. Yan's installment, Bridge, features more than a thousand Chinese ceramic soup spoons. Angelucci's project, Your Morning is My Night, is a collaboration with a Beijing photographer. Recently they met for the first time at a dim sum restaurant in Chinatown, appropriately enough, to talk about their work and food. Can I pour you some tea? Sure, thank you. Thank you. The steamed dumplings, the shrimp ones. Can you teach me how to say it properly? Xia jiao. Xia stream jiao. Dumplings, so xia jiao. Xia jiao. Yeah, it's good. Okay, yeah, good. We'll get some then. <laughs> All right. Earlier I was asking you about your work, the beautiful archway made of Chinese soup spoons and how labor-intensive it must be to install that piece and how many spoons there are. There are uh, over 1,300 ceramic spoons and it was a lot of work. It's kind of a, a typical bridge you can see in a Chinese garden. Why a bridge? Um, bridge is very symbolic for me as an immigrant. It connects two continents. You can stay down the bridge, then you look over to both sides you have a very unique and different perspective on the you know Chinese culture, Canadian culture. I wanted to make bridge for a long time. One day I was eating in a Chinese restaurant and suddenly it struck me that I should use Chinese soup spoon, ceramic spoons to make a bridge. It's a very common object. One time I went back to China and I was eating with my family at home and suddenly I realized that my mom used a lot of these phones at home, but I don't have this in Canada. I never bought one. I guess because I've been away from China so long, and there's something that makes me feel a sense of belonging. And suddenly I found this kind of belonging with the phone. So yeah, it was kind of sentimental at times. Yeah. When I was in China, the spoons saved my life because often my chopstick skills were really bad. And so I would just get a spoon <laughs> that helped me to eat. <laughs> you lived in China for a while, right? I was there tr on two different occasions. Is that the time you had the piece done with Han Shu together? Yes, exactly. Han Shu and I met in Canada. Um, he's from Beijing originally, and we were introduced by mutual friends while I was in Shanghai doing my residency. And given that Toronto and Shanghai are exactly 12 hours difference in time zone. He had the idea that we should each take photographs twice a day at 9 in the morning and 9 at night. When I got back to Canada we paired our images together. A number of them contain food and when you're in a different culture you're really trying to understand where you are, what things are like, and because neither of us have a good language uh, skills to rely on, we had to use other senses. And so little ordinary things like tea and food and are ways of trying to communicate and understand something. As you know, immigrant, English is not my first language and I'm terrible at it. <laughs> Thank you. It's comforting. But anyway, so I feel it's intimidating for me to speak sometimes. But with my work, it's my new vocabulary. I can use it to express all my feelings. It's easier than, than use words, and also it's more powerful. It gave me another way to communicate better than words can do. I hope our project communicates is that, you know, our cultures are of course extremely different, but then there's all these ways that we connect and as humans we're very much the same. Alright, here we go. Oh, they're so good. Delicious. Xiao Jing Yan and Sarah Angelucci, two of the artists featured in a new exhibition at the Art Gallery of Mississauga. It's titled The Bao or Take It. Continues through the 5th of January. Thanks to Metro Mornings and Joe for putting that piece together. If you're looking for